All right, the next analysis is going to be an aging analysis that will look at how many outstanding invoices we have. This is typically done at the cutoff period. And um, if we have a policy that says that we should be writing off anything um, that is H more than 120 days or something like that, we want to see if the value in this evaluation analysis, right? So we want to make sure that those uh, accounts receivable numbers are not contained in your balance sheet anymore if they are supposed to be written off after 120 days. All right, so let's get started. Um, let's go ahead and start with looking at the database or the subset that we had created. From here, we can go to the analysis section under the categorized uh, subset. And we're going to do an aging report. So the aging report is defaulted to say what is going to be the aging date. So if I'm going to say, if I'm going to look at the age of my transactions as of a particular date, then I would put it here. Uh, well, since we are looking with the year 2015, I will go ahead and do 2015 0401 as my aging date. Um, why is that? Because I want to make sure that I do not count the first day as um, I don't want anything that is current, like as of April 1st, to be included in that subset. Now, the exercise is asking us to modify the intervals to 31, 59. What else should it be? So if the month of March has 31 days and February has 28, both of them will make 59. And then if January has 31 days, then you would make it 90. I even though it says 91, um, they made a mistake. Unless, unless there's February 28th. Let's find out. Let's find out. April only has 28 days. I mean, February only has 28 days in, in the year 2015. Okay, so 31, 59, 90. And this should be 120. And everything else after that should be basically a zero. Um, I do not need to generate an, a, a detailed aging database for that. So I don't need to have another subset. And I don't need to generate a key summary database either. I'm just going to call this an aging report. And once I analyze it, then I should have a spreadsheet right, with all of this information. Um, 162 days, I'm sorry, 162 of my records are from the previous month, the month of April, I'm sorry, the month of March. Then these are from February, these are from January, and these three transactions are coming from uh, previous period, right? Now, if these are credits, I want to know why they're still here, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So for now, I'm, I'm concerned with this, these three transactions, and I can look at the graph by clicking in here where it says um, graph this, and I can change the way this um, AR analysis looks at. Um, this is going to be my 30 day, 60 day. And by the way, you could have kept 30, 60, 90, but this was just going to uh, make it match the actual dates, um, anything above 120 would be this. Um, all right, let's go ahead and make this a, uh, a different type of guy. I could have done a pie chart and you want this to be current, right? Um, I could have done a 3D instead. Um, so the assignment is just asking us to, to do a, um, just a bar bar pie, I'm sorry, bar graph. So that is not it. This would, would be it. Uh, what else is it asking us to do? Let's see. Um, it will ask us to create just a bar graph, make it 3D. Um, all right. Um, we want to right click on this. And by the way, when you right click, you can change a bunch of stuff. You can do the point labels, right, which would show you uh, the points that every every ad you can change the colors. Uh, and that's probably why you don't want to use my colors. Let me <laughs> let me change this to a, a better palette. Um, and 
I will change the color to just white. And I could have chosen that to be, uh, that's too much. I guess I'll just use the default. All right, so if I wanted to change the title for this, I would go to the um, edit title section and I would type something like um, aging uh, report as of April 1st, 2015. Um, this may be um, the actual overall title. I like that better. Um, and then this, we can locate the axis, right? So let's look at the data grid, not at this point. Let's look at um, your properties. And I can go to the y-axis. Um, it's looking correctly. That's fine. Um, Okay, I lost my chain of thought. All right, so here, it, right now we're representing the number of records, right, that are passed through. We have about 253 total, but we don't wanna look at number of records. We wanna see the net value instead. So I see that the net value of my accounts, um, let me make sure that's what this, this is asking. It is asking us to do net value. So yeah, so the net value would be, what is the accounts receivable uh, after you adjust it for any credits. Uh, and so this is it. This is uh, your actual graph. And if you wanted to export this, then you would just print it or export it.